There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry, guys. Uh, we're having some connection issues here on our, on, on our end. Yeah. Well, so we use our 3D printer to fix it. Right. It should, <laughs> it should be okay now. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. We're good to go. Did it? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. We 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 unplugged it and back in. Yes. We no, turned always works. We turned on and off the internet, and uh, <laughs> it, it worked. So <laughs> thank you, Kevin. <laughs> So okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're running a little bit behind. Uh, we're actually going to wait a few minutes before we do the actual drawing, um, just so people can start trickling in or continue to trickle in a little bit more. But in the meantime, um, my name is Kelvin, and this is... My name is Daniel. Daniel, and we're from ICOP USA. Um, specifically, we're on the West Coast in uh, Los Angeles. Well, actually, technically, we're in the city of industry. Yeah. The best name for a city. Once again, city of industry. Yep. yep. Yeah. How, 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 how much more fitting can that be? Definitely. Um, but where are you guys all from, Kevin? Um, I guess Kevin was the first one to sign in, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we got, got Amy um, and Zach. I'm assuming you all were at, um, at Maker Fair. Yeah. But, if you weren't, you wouldn't be. Uh, Aware of this drawing. <laughs> Maybe they just uh, typed in a random URL and it worked. Right. You're Joshua from New York. Oh, cool. Thanks for signing in. New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay, I got a couple of friends in New Jersey. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've never been over there. I've always wanted to go. Yeah. yeah. But it's hot. Northeast Pennsylvania. Northeast is very specific mm -hmm. and non specific at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was I'm born and raised in uh, Los Angeles. So that's all I know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I visited Mexico City. I've heard a lot of people. I've heard people say that New York has some similarities to Mexico City, the compactness. Mm -hmm. Saw you at WMF. I think I saw you, Kelvin. Me? Yeah. Or make a friend. <laughs> Which one? The one in here or San Francisco? Here, as in New York, not here in the city of industry. <laughs> we don't have one here. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah, well, I wonder why that is. That we don't have one out in LA? Yeah. That's a good question. But the one is up in San Francisco is pretty big, so I just the figure that we have uh, yeah, yeah, sure. two of them in California. So, um, Maker Fair, New York. Um, it was a few weeks ago, September 23rd and 24th. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. It was um it was hot it was humid, um, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. I think um, officially there were about seventy five hundred to eight thousand um, attendees, and over a hundred exhibitors. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we were one of them. Um, lots of three D printers there, and, and, and ours was one of them. And this is our fourth raffle. I think it's fourth our fourth or fifth raffle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we basically given one away every time. Um, we've been at a Maker Fair event, mm -hmm. so New York being the latest one. We were um, at the San Francisco one earlier this year, back in May. Yeah, um, that was very fun as well. Yeah, that was really cool. We had a nice surprise in that we were placed indoors instead of outdoors. Right. So it was very nice and cool. Right. Right. Air conditioning. Yes. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was. Um, yeah. We did, we had, um, yeah. You went with um, You went with us to um, right. Uh, not not this year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It was Al. Yeah, yeah. Who is working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He's technical support. Yeah, he's he got us back. He, he turned off in the minute. Yeah. He turned back on. <laughs> so. Yeah. so, the 3D printer we've given away this year looks a little bit different than the ones we've given, given away in the past. Um, and we have a new banner up, um, also designed by Alan. It looks mm -hmm. pretty good, if I say so myself. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this outer bed feeder and you know the the, the four features that we have up on, on our banner? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, this is actually the new 3D printer we have. Um, this one has the auto bed feeder, and uh, so if you look over here, you can see that it has a little, it has a whole little uh, machine that holds onto all these uh, beds. Can you take one out? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is a uh, the print bed? Yes, correct. Yeah. And so uh, what this does is it has a little motor on it, and it, it can push in the uh, beds after print. So this is this isn't just a regular uh, Enjoy 3D printer. This is has to be updated to function like this. And 
So after you calibrate it, um, you can then set it up. You can either do it through via just regular computer, so connecting it via Mac or USB directly to a PC, or you can set up um, set up uh, what you want to print on a USB or SD card. And so what it'll do is uh, it'll print the number of uh, models you want to print. So like that, um, um, you can mass produce basically uh, pieces a lot faster, as opposed to before, where if you had the regular Enjoy, um, you would have to uh, print something out, then uh, pop it off, and then clean out the bed. Oh, I see. You, you know. so, so we don't actually have to be here physically to remove the print off the bed. We can just you know, set the print and, pro and process and just walk away. Correct, yeah. So okay. it'll push out the bed like this. Uh -huh. And then uh, once the bed gets pushed off, an another bed also gets, or it's getting pushed by the new uh, clean bed, so to speak. And then from there, it, it continues to print the next uh, models. So like that, you could set it to print like 50 models, etc., and then it keeps printing them out. And like that, you don't have to keep an eye on it. You don't have to uh, waste time taking the model out and then telling it to print again. Very cool. Very cool. And so uh, the other features are, so it has a, the, a positive resume feature that we added. So uh, um, right here in the back, you, it normally this button was just used for uh, removing the filament. But now you can press the button to um, either tell it just to pause the print, in which case the head will move out the way. And if, let's say, you wanted to check how a print is coming out, mm -hmm. you can uh, you know, take it out, see how, how it's coming. And uh, <coughs> oh, OK. Um, so um, this comes already pre-assembled. Um, there's, well, there's only a couple cables you have to connect is the only difference. Uh, the 3D printer itself, the standard one, comes pre-assembled, and you just have to put uh, uh, a little, um, it's a filament holder. Actually, yeah, there it is. It's right here. It's uh, a fancy piece, right? Yeah, so, and, um, so for the standard uh, Android 3D printer without the auto batch feeder, this is the only thing you have to uh, install. Um, and the one with the auto bed feeder just requires you to connect uh, connect the, a couple cables, like one over here in the back, and then from there it's uh, ready after you calibrate it. Um, now, the 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 model that we're giving away uh, giving away does it does it come with the auto bed feeder, um, or is it just the the pause print um, the pause and resume function? Um, the one we're going to be giving away is just the 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 Enjoy 3D printer. Okay, so so it doesn't include this this um, accessory attachment. Uh, correct. Yeah, um, this is just one that we're showing off. So you guys can see um, something new we're going to be coming out with, essentially that we're going to start selling uh, very soon. And but the one that we are going to be giving out is going to have a uh, a filament sensor. So if there's no filament, let's say you forget to put the filament in the reel, if uh, if let's say it runs out of filament, etc., um, the 3D printer will pause, and from there you you know you'll you'll go and check on the print, for instance, and you'll see it's not printing. Then you can just say, oh, okay, I just got to put in the filament, and you push the uh, button right here in the back, and it'll continue on with the print. As opposed to uh, previously, you would uh, tell it to print, and if it ran out of filament, it would continue on. Right, I've seen that a lot on the other printers, too. Um, if, if the print goes wrong, if it runs out of filament, the filament breaks, uh, whatever it may be, the, the extruder head just continues to move, and, then, and nothing happens. Yeah. Right? But in this case, the machine would pause, and, and you, you can pick up the print where it left off? Yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. you just yeah. feed in the and it, it so actually you want to start over. Correct. No correct. starting over. Yeah, that actually happened to me at a convention. Uh, it started printing and then uh, um, it just paused, and I was like, wait, what happened? And that's when I realized, oh, I didn't, I didn't put the filament while setting it up. Um, so then it, I just put in the filament, and then it was able to continue printing. <clears throat> and this is an issue for other, for, for many other printers as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of others that don't have this feature. Um, where they, they will just try to continue printing, and then um, uh, you come back later on and notice, okay, this it just wasted, um, it just basically wasted time instead of printing and such. Uh, so another thing you can do with the pause feature that we implemented is um, with the button, you, you can not only just pause to, you know, for instance, check out print or whatever. Um, you can, it can also uh, you can use that feature to remove filament. So if you hold the button right here in the back in the middle of the print, it'll then um, It'll then uh, move the head off to the side. It'll do similar to a pause. Then from there, it'll heat, keep the extruder heated up and then remove the filament. So some things you can do with that that are really interesting are you can do multicolored prints, multi -layer. So um, let me put it up. So with this one, you can see kind of we used about four colors on this one. And uh, so just a little cylinder. 
and this one isn't too practical, right? But this one, for instance, is uh, um, Eiffel Tower. And right here, you see I use two colors. I change it out uh, four or five times. So I start off from the bottom, printing out black. Then from there, I change it to red, then change it back to black, then red, then black. So uh, you can do this either manually, where you just pause it by pressing the button, or you can uh, edit the G code so that it'll pause at a specific layer. And you can do that all through our software on uh, Repetier Host. Uh, and uh, so Repetier Host, uh, for those of you that don't know, is uh, open source software. So um, you don't have to pay for it or anything like that. And it's our customized version, so it works right out of the box with that 3D printer. Uh, works on Linux, uh, Windows, as well as Mac. And um, if you ever need help installing it, um, feel free to contact us. Um, we can always help you out. But for the most part, a lot of the instructions are pretty uh, straightforward. Very cool. And another one that we did using the pause feature is this little Monarch Butterfly. I think this one's my favorite one. Yeah, this one looks yeah. really nice. So this one, what uh, what was done is, if you look right inside, you can see uh, the colors that were used in each layer. And it's basically, each layer adds a different component to the image, and it makes it look, you know, it looks like a regularly colored uh, butterfly. It looks really nice, a little Monarch Butterfly. <clears throat> now, I notice many of these prints are pretty smooth, and there's a lot of high details. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the high precision um, um, tolerance here? Yeah, so uh, so a lot of 3D printers, they'll uh, tout that um, <clears throat> that uh, they have a 0.1 uh, millimeter uh, 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 resolution, right, which ours does as well. The thing is, ours is, uh, the important thing is ours is really consistent. It has about an average, uh, it has a 0 0.03, uh, um, point, yeah, 0 0.03 millimeter uh, Variation, so that means the prints that come out very consistent. So you, you look at a lot of the prints, and not only consistently come out looking very the same, um, they also come out looking very good. Other three D printers, you might print something and it comes out well. You print it again, and then it doesn't come out, mm -hmm. and you, you are kind of left wondering what 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 was the issue? You had just printed it out the time right. before. So it'll come out looking halfway decent in, in one print, and then look. Horrible in the next print. If it's not, it fails. Or it fails. Yeah, yeah. it's not very consistent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so with ours, that's one of the things that we like to tell you is that um, our three D printer is uh, very consistent mm -hmm. and has really high quality uh, prints. I've seen and I've I, well, I've read and I heard a lot of different other um, other different three D printers tell or say that oh we have an X Y Z um, a position that that has it's very very. Um, Hi. Or, oh, okay. Or, 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 well, yeah. before I answer that, um, uh, Kevin is asking. Oh, what's the build volume? volume. Okay. So build volume is ten by ten by fifteen centimeters. So um, this bed, well, obviously you can see the bed all the way here at the bottom. But so this is about fifteen centimeters. Um, that ends up being, I believe, it's about uh, four by four by six inches, right? More or less. Um, and uh, so the. You know, this is a really nice and compacted computer and stuff. Uh, a 3D printer, I'm sorry. So you can have it on your desk. It's you know very nice. You have something printing on the side. Um, other 3D printers are a lot larger and they take up more room, a lot harder to move. Um, this one obviously has the bed feeder. Um, so uh, and even with the bed feeder, it's still not that. Um, I feel like it doesn't take up too much space. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, your question was, oh, okay, X, X and uh, X, X, Y, and Z precision. Right, right, right. right. So some 3D printers, um, they'll mention that uh, characteristic. It's like, like, oh, you know, this is our X, Y precision or Z precision. Mm -hmm. um, what that means is essentially um, our position precision is what I should say. So what that means is how much it'll move in those axes. Mm -hmm. So if it says uh, a Z precision of, I don't know, uh, 0.1 millimeters, that means that that is the least the minimum amount of distance it can consistently move okay right? and uh and just so so how fine it can move yes so, so the larger the, the value the the more coarse the movement would be correct? correct and so and that obviously adds to uh how good or bad the print is right. and overall right um that along with the minimum resolution mm -hmm. um the uh the, the motors that are used on the product and such, all those uh, variables basically add to what is ultimately going to be the uh, the uh, the quality of the print. Right. And so um, what we like to just tell people is, okay, you're trying to find an answer of how good of a print it is. Right. And well, the uh, 
the variation of the print is basically that you can say, all right, this has a, our 3D printer has a 0 0.03 millimeter uh, print variation. So, mm -hmm. that, so that tells you, okay, that, that's pretty consistent mm -hmm. um, as opposed to having to give you all these other variables and right. you try to, you know, um, imagine in your head what that's going right. to come out to. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> and so, just, so just because you have a good, really good, really precise uh, XYZ um, precision, uh, position precision, it doesn't mean you'll get a, a good quality print. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. If, so if, if, if your uh, position position is more accurate than, let's say, what your uh, filament, your extruder can extrude, mm -hmm. then it yeah. won't matter how per that is that precise. That makes sense. And the same vice versa. Right. Um, right. And uh, <clears throat> so some other um, interesting things or a lot of things that people like about our 3D printers, aside from it being assembled when it gets sent to you, is just uh, the build quality is, you know, uh, CNC metal and such. It's uh, very nice quality. It feels really rugged while still looking presentable. Um, other three printers you have to put together, or they use uh, 3D printed components mm -hmm. for like what we'll, we'll we consider to be like important, uh, uh, important to affecting the precision of a print. Mm -hmm. right. So they'll have them in a frame or stuff that holds, let's say, the 3D the extruder, and that leaves room for inconsistencies that can obviously make the print come out worse than right. than what's intended. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, so some things that we we show right here is just the different uh, filaments that we have. We have uh, several colors, um, some classic colors like Zaku Green or Gundam Red. Very classic. Yeah. Very classic. Yeah. And we also have like a transparent, which um, um, I've seen. It looks really nice. Have you it's, seen it? Yeah, transparent. It's, it's really cool. We also have a marble. I forgot which one, but we have one that looks like it's like marble. Um, this is actually printed with that. And um, it looks, it, it, I mean, it doesn't look exactly like marble, but it looks really nice. It has a really nice texture to it. So these colors, we sell them in sizes of 200 grams, 500 grams, and a kilogram. The kilogram we sell for $25. And um, yeah, and well, there's no, uh, uh, all, the, all the filaments have this the same price tag. So if you get transparent, it's not going to be more expensive than, let's say, a simple color like orange or white. So, um, when you get a 3D printer, whether through the raffle or if you buy it through us, um, you always get, uh, I believe it's 200, it's 250 grams or 200 grams of filament that comes with it. So you can always print with that. And if you decide to use another filament, you can. Ours uses 1.75 millimeter PLA. So it's a standardized size. So you can, if you prefer another uh, uh, brand of filament, you can definitely use that. Or if you want to use ours, that's um, always possible. You can always use that. And um, one of the things, there's one more thing I wanted to mention with the 3D printer. Um, well, I guess well, we can just uh, get to the raffle, I guess, right now. Yeah, we, we do have a, a, um, a time limit, actually. Ah, so, okay, so yeah. I think it's important to, to get to the, the important part, the raffle. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're going to be choosing, I'm going to go off screen here. We're going to be choosing two names. Yes, yeah, two names. So the first name chosen will be the winner. And then we'll be choosing a backup winner, mm -hmm. just in case the, the, the first name, um, uh, the individual doesn't get back to us in time, or, or sometimes they never get back to us at all. Um, and then I think you wanted to, I don't, I don't remember if it was Alan's idea or your idea, you wanted to just to make things more interesting. Yeah, yeah. so uh, for all you guys right now in the chat, if you guys could send an email to uh, uh, the email, basically the email address that uh, I told you guys about this uh, stream, which is um, enews at icoptech.com. If you guys send an email, and uh, all the people that send an email within the next hour, I'll hour, say, yeah. so, um, you guys will also be, you guys will be considered for uh, runner-ups, basically. So if the first two names don't respond, we'll get a name from all you, all of you guys that are watching this stream right now. Right. So uh, um, again, it's enews at icoptech.com. Um, Alan, would you mind posting the, the email address? Just so you, and uh, make sure to send an email within the hour end. If uh, none of the two names we pull out uh, respond back by Monday, we are saying, right? By Monday, correct. Yeah, so uh, if none of the winners that we draw out uh, respond by Monday, we'll pick out a name from uh, the emails that we were sent uh, within the next hour. Right. So Monday's date is the 16th, I think. Right, October 16th. Yeah, so if uh, if your name gets called, make sure to send us an email before October 16th or on October 16th. October. And in the history of this raffle, we've actually had more um, 
more backup winners. Yeah. And the original winners. Yeah. So so there's a pretty good chance that one of you guys might end up getting this though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. So we have about five to six hundred entries. Yeah. In the office box here. And um, Daniel, you want the honors to draw the winner? Um, the yeah, first sure. Okay. So, so no, no peeking. Okay. Let's, let's, let's hold it up here so, so people can tell we're not cheating. Okay. Okay, let's go. Get this one. So this one is. And I believe there, there's a number associated with each name, correct? Um, yes. Okay. So every name also has an ID. Um, so. So, um, and all the emails I sent you, guys, and all the emails you guys received, they should say an ID number. And uh, so the winner, and that's just to identify you guys from if any repeated names. So the winner is going to be Alex Glass. And yeah, it's going to be Alex Glass. And so I don't remember pronouncing the uh, ID. Yeah, yeah, we are now. Yeah. yeah. And so the ID number is 300. So if your name is Alex Glass, and more importantly, if your ID number is 300, make sure to shoot us an email before the 16th of October, correct? So, um, which is this coming Monday, and that way you can claim your prize of a 3D printer. So in the event Alex doesn't get back with us, we will have the backup winner here. The winner yeah. looking yet? Am I in the right area? Yeah, there you go. No, Just there, you go. <laughs> no. no there it is. There you go. Okay. Uh, Alright, this one feels good. I have two of them. Alright, is that one? Alright, our backup winner is Bobby Woodbury. Bobby spelled B O B B I. And your number is 225, 225. Bobby Woodbury. Woodbury, sorry. And what was that you said? One, uh, 225. Oh, cool, 225. Yeah, so then, uh, so th that's the winner and the runner up. Um, again, you guys here in the chat, uh, make sure to send us an email within the next hour at enews at icoptech.com. And you guys will be considered. So if these uh, two uh, names that we called don't respond, don't send us an email by Monday, we'll, uh, we'll, you guys will have a chance to, uh, to win the 3D printer instead. And for everybody else who didn't win, that's OK. Um, you can easily find our 3D printer and most of our other products, actually at uh, one of our distributors. Uh, we have Triam Technologies up in Canada. Uh, on the East Coast, we have WDL Systems. Um, in the South, we have Microcomputer Systems. Mm -hmm. And um, on the West Coast, where we're at, we have CoCreate. So um, their website information can be found on, um, uh, is it listed on the email? Um, uh, on the email? Uh, is it? Yes, it is. Um, not yes. So their information, their contact information, you can find it in the emails that you guys get from us. Right. Yeah, so uh, that's it for our raffle. But if you guys have any questions, I guess we'll stick here for a couple minutes. Any questions about 3D printing in general or about our 3D printer, uh, feel free to, uh, to ask us right here in the chat. Yeah, we have about five to ten minutes we can hang out for. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Seems good. Okay, all right. Thank you for joining us, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right. Alex Glass. Is that Alex? Um, after all. <laughs> so I got, I got all these. Did you want um, the physical paper? I'm going to stop it. And you guys can reply in the chat. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Are we back on? Yeah, we should be. Yeah, it's coming yeah. back on. Sorry about that. We turned it on and off again. Yeah. So, uh, Eric Zaru, you asked uh, about how much it weighs. This weighs like almost nothing. It's like really light. Um, cost of materials, I mean, <clears throat> I'd probably say like 20 cents. It's, it, like I said, it's really like not a lot of filament that was used for this. And this was, I think, I think I made this as, because um, you can control the, uh, uh, the density of the print, and this, I think I made it as dense as possible, but mm -hmm. just the design of it doesn't, uh, is not very, uh, doesn't have a lot of filament to use. Yeah, it's, it's really light. I mean, I don't know if you want to hold it. But. <laughs> if you had to um, guesstimate how, I guess, how long of the piece of filament would you need to, to print that out? Um, 
don't know. Mm. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's yeah. because really, uh, because again, you know, all these layers are really thin and such. Uh, yeah. uh, I just like to be sure on the spot. Well, thank you. But uh, yeah, for sure, we, we, we could probably print hundreds of these just because, I mean, yeah, but, like uh, with a kilogram, that's $25. So we could print hundreds of these. These things don't really weigh much. Um, a lot of these prints, really, I think the heaviest print we have, it might even be this. Uh, One of these turtles, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah these, are, these are a little bit of the heaviest. So. Mario here is pretty. Pretty dense, pretty heavy. <laughs> Did you take it out of the stand? That's funny. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. Look at that. I fixed it. <laughs> um, this one the this. castle. This. So I guess we should read the questions that um, you guys are posting. Yeah. Um, so Eric is asking, um, how much does the castle weigh? Hmm. Okay, this this is also really like so. This one I know when this one was printed, they printed this one like I think at ten or fifteen percent uh, uh, density. So that means it only had like most of the plastic is on the outer layers. The inside is pretty hollow. Um, I don't have a good. Wish we had a scale. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. How much? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty it's... bad with uh, with weight. Like, <laughs> it weighs as much as uh, a nickel. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it is not very heavy at all. Okay. And, and so, you know, nothing to compare is like these are actually, I guess, a lot more dense mm -hmm. than uh, uh, than the castles. So um, I imagine you could definitely print probably more castles than you can of these little turtles. Just because, like I said, a, a lot of that, a lot of the castle is very uh, hollow. Right. Yeah, you know, a, a lot of people really like how. Um, cheap the filament is. A lot, a lot, uh, I'll speak with a lot of people at conventions, and they'll say, "Oh, okay, well, well the 3D printer has a price tag of about 530, mm -hmm. so the filament must be really, really expensive, right?" I mean, 25 dollars for the kilogram. Is, right. uh, a lot of people are, are definitely surprised by that. And the fact that we can use um, any brand of filament, right? any brand of PLA filament. So there are a lot of other 3D printers out there that require you to use their own proprietary filament. Mm -hmm. um, ours do not. Yeah. So I've seen it does not. I've seen I think some PLA filament go for about I think eighteen or twenty dollars mm -hmm. per kilogram. Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't like ours or if uh, for whatever reason right. price right. or quality, you can always find uh, right. others in the, in the market. Right. On the on the West Coast, we have um, like Fry's Electronics. Oh yeah, it's very yeah. common. I'm not sure what you guys have on the, on the East Coast, but uh, almost any electronics store um, would have it these days. Yeah, like Radio Shack. Yeah. Yeah. Radio Shack, just say especially Radio Shack. <laughs> Radio Shack always always has the best price. <laughs> um, other things about the weight. Um, and we don't have a scale. We have to show. Yeah, but again, like I said, this is really big. That's three D printed scale this time. That's that's a good idea. Normally, we have a little print. That uh, you kind of, it's basically transparent color, and you kind of see uh, the hollowness inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, these over here are hollow, but that's uh, designed like that. Do you guys have any other questions? We'll leave it well, yeah. If there, are not, if there are not any other questions, or not no any other questions, so I guess we can yeah, end cool. it for today. Yeah. So uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, again, my name is Daniel. Oh, one more question. Oh. <laughs> Making a custom case for an Arduino or a Pi project. Can you 3D print threads for mounting? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the threads can can be made, and there's already a lot of uh, um, Arduino and uh, and uh, Pi uh, cases, uh, Raspberry Pi cases, that you can find like on Thingiverse. There's other similar websites. Um, speaking of uh, Arduino, um, our 3D printer actually uses an Arduino. Um, so this is our own version of it. And so we sell these uh, other versions. This is our Educate. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about it more, Kevin. Um, Alan can. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's our Educate. It has a built-in breadboard. Right. Um, it uses, uh, since we are uh, 
primarily a CPU manufacturer. It uses one of our Vortex EX uh, CPU in it. So it has a built-in breadboard already, has uh, USB ports, SD card. Um, it's powered, uh, you connect it to uh, micro USB, I believe. And um, so it basically it already comes with the case. Um, do you guys know what's the retail price? It's 75 I want to say. Um, it's seventy dollars retail price, um, but for um, again uh, back to your question for three D printing cases, yeah, you definitely can print those out. You can find those uh, online, and um, you can also use um, um, they have screws that they use just well. You can just put a screw on one side and or a bolt, I would say, and then that on the other side. That'd be another way to hold a case if uh, if uh, if your concern is the case falling apart. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you, you, there's definitely already a lot of designs for Arduino and uh, and uh, Raspberry Pi cases. I hope that answers your question, Eric. Okay, I think that's all the time we have for today, mm -hmm. this session. Yeah, um, thanks uh, a lot for joining us, guys. Um, again, make sure to send us an email. Um, so um, hopefully one of you guys can, uh, can win the 3D printer. Yeah. And we'll see you all at the next Maker Fair.